Hi, I'm Dan, and welcome to this second video on my Mega Dan Retro Gaming channel. Uh, this is Alien Trilogy that I'm going to play today on the PlayStation 1. Um, hopefully, I do better than I did at Mega Man, playing Mega Man last time. Um, I have actually recorded or tried to record a second video I recorded myself playing um, what was it Castlevania for the NES but for whatever reason the recording didn't record so hopefully the recording records the recording didn't record so I ended up with just the audio commentary but not the actual recording of the game so uh, yeah we'll see how we do here I've actually um, unlike Mega Man, which I played in the 80s, with Alien Trilogy, I've actually played it more recently. Uh, just going to the options, hopefully. Um, da -da 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 -da. Sound effects and music. Let's turn the music down a bit. Difficulty. Uh, let's go for the easiest, because I really am rubbish as you will have seen previously if you watched the Mega Man video um, obviously if you want to support my channel feel free to subscribe and it really helps obviously if you like and comment on videos as well so uh, it's great if you can do that and obviously if you have any advice or any games you think oh, I'd love it if you give this game a try so the idea of this channel is that I have a tendency to overwork so um, I thought if I set up a gaming channel I enjoy gaming if I set up a gaming channel maybe it'll encourage me at least a few times a week to sit down and take a break from working to play games and not feel so guilty about doing so because I can share what I play on YouTube and if in the future this channel ends up being popular enough for me to monetize it then obviously it gives me an incentive as long as I don't take it too seriously it gives me incentive to then take more breaks to play a little bit more games and try different games that you lot suggest that I should try so if you do have any game suggestions suggest the game and the preferred console uh, so I know this game has been on a few different consoles back in the day so let's start. You're advised to clear the entrance for the Marine Drop crew by retrieving crate and barrel uh, barcodes. It's not showing clearly. Um, which are dispatched. Da, 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 da. Uh, dispatch the xenomorphs that you may encounter. Note that due to the protective design. Uh, da, 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 da. can't read that very easily um, that's my settings that are causing that so uh, I'm not playing this on a PS1 uh, I'm playing this on a uh, trying to think what it is um, a, a little mini retro console um, just so that it's easier for me to be able to stream it through HDMI uh, onto here and let's have a look at the controls left right um, so yeah so I've got a lot of PlayStation 1 games right, let's brave it and I remember playing this game at, I can't remember I think it was on the Sega Saturn perhaps and thinking oh my god look at look at those graphics and being really impressed with the 3D look. I'd got a Nintendo 64, I think, at the time. Um, and I generally prefer Nintendo 64. But I was really, really impressed when I saw things like this. Because Nintendo, generally... I'm going to have no bullets left at my rate. Uh, generally have smoother 3D graphics. But less data because it was on cartridges that was 
a lucky shot. Um, so things can appear more smeared out. Whereas on other consoles of the same time, they may not be such good 3D generally, but it would be more texture details when they are, because they're obviously disc based. Whoops. I only have a choice of two buttons and I get it wrong. Uh, so I originally wanted to... No, I can't see it. Where is it? There it is. I originally wanted to play, not this game, but a game that I think this is based on. I might be wrong. Someone can correct me in the description if they want. Um, but I think... Come on, in you come. I'd quite like to shoot you, little face hugger. Um... There was an alien game on the Atari Jaguar, and back in the day, anyone who's as old as me will uh, remember that back in the day, everything was about how many bits something was. So it was like, you got the 8-bit NES, the 8-bit Master System, and then it's like... Uh, Mega Drive and Super Nintendo and they're like 16 bits and it's oh my god that's like double the 8 bit and then PlayStation came out at 32 bits and got it that time um, Sega Saturn came out and the whole time there was talk of the Ultra 64 coming out there was going to be a 64 bit console and obviously at the time I was thinking wow like I've got Super Nintendo that's 16 bits. I'd love to have a 64 bit. Imagine what that could do if you can get what you can get on a Super Nintendo. Like, I loved Killer Instinct and things like that. I was thinking, imagine what a oops, 62, uh, a 64 bit console would do. Um, and at the time, I was reading all the gaming magazines. I'm going to shoot those barrels, but I'm trying not to walk on the acid. No, I've got to use a shotgun. Um, so, I'm trying to work out where I'm going. So I, uh, I couldn't open that door unless there was in the room somewhere. That's what, yeah, dozy me, da dozy down. Um, so yeah, so I was reading all of the magazines at the time, uh, Computer and Video Games was probably the main magazine that I read, and I know you're there somewhere, and um, so I'd read Computer and Video Games magazine a lot, and I used to read like Edge magazine, and uh, the console that was being talked about a lot when the Super Nintendo was out was the Atari Jaguar because of it being 64 bit. But I could never manage to get hold of one. Uh, I couldn't afford one, obviously, as a child. Could never manage to get hold of one. And uh, just trying to. There's a changing gun could never manage to get hold of one and but some of the games like I would see images like what you can see here you know this sort of screen here where obviously because of the style it does make it look very good and not all pixely and it's definitely 3d and not 2d and and so I was so impressed with it that um, I was so impressed with it. Where are you? Um, that I really, really wanted one. But at the same time, I kept holding out, thinking, you know, give it a couple of years. And so I was a teenager, so I was thinking, give it a couple of years, and the Ultra 64 will be out. And. Nintendo does incredible games, so yeah, that's the one to kind of hold out for. 
uh, just trying to make sure that I use the right guns. Um, so I was thinking that's the one to hold out for. Where'd you go? Ooh. Yeah, that's my face you're hugging. Annoying thing. Um, but you didn't get a game like this necessarily on the Nintendo 64 when it came out. But yeah, it was it was kind of unusual times that back then, like I never heard when Nintendo 64 came out, I never heard any kind of hype about the GameCube or anything like that, you know, saying 128-bit console, or whereas everything prior to that was, this is an 8-bit console, then a 16-bit console, then a 32-bit console, and Nintendo skipped 32-bit and went straight for 64, and you had Sega coming out with things like Sega CD and uh, what have you, and you had other consoles trying to get in the market, which you don't really get nowadays quite so much. Uh, I know partly there's a lot of PC stuff and stuff uh, moving to like streaming consoles and people have mobile gaming etc. But it's not quite the same feel. I think anyone who lived through the 90s... Oh dear. Run away! Oh. Anyone who lived through the 90s um, will remember that kind of appeal of the constant changing, oh, dead, the constant changing of, like, yeah, you've got NES in, oh, good, I can skip that. Let's continue. Does it give me an option to continue? Um... Yeah, you've got the NES in like 1986 or 87, and then you've got the Super Nintendo, because I was more a Nintendo fan when I was younger. Uh, Super Nintendo in about 92, I think. That's a bit better, just one shot. Um... And then you had the Nintendo 64 in like 96 or 97. Probably the first shot did that. Then um, I kind of, I, I didn't really, I like the Nintendo 64. I didn't really get on with the PlayStation. Mainly because... It, um, I like that you could save, <laughs> it's a stupid little thing, but I like that you could save with a cartridge based whoops, console and found it really awkward that I'd have to buy memory sticks for the Nintendo, uh, for the PlayStation. Um, and I couldn't really afford anything at that point. I wasn't at home anymore when the PlayStation was out. Um, I was living on my own, working, paying my bills. was a young teenager, or middling teenager, like 16, 17. Paying my bills, couldn't afford uh, Come on, come back. Couldn't afford to buy a PlayStation, so I'd rent a PlayStation from Blockbuster Video and rent a few games. Um, can't in you come. Uh, I'd rent a few games and try and play it and see how much I can complete in the time I've got renting. And I wouldn't turn the console off for the whole time because I'd be in the middle of a game and wouldn't have any memory cards, couldn't save. And, yeah, of course I miss you. Um, couldn't save, and so... Come on, I want to press that button. Um, 
And so yeah, I didn't really get on with the PlayStation 1. I don't really have any good reason. I, I used to, I worked at Butlin's holiday camp. So I used to play a friend Sega Saturn at Butlin's and I used to play PlayStation when I could rent it from Blockbuster. And I used to play my PlayStation at my uh, Super Nintendo until Nintendo 64 came out and then I had a Nintendo 64 and I completed GoldenEye and obviously played a lot of multiplayer GoldenEye but I never completed come on come back you were back here much quicker last time oh, now you're coming back um, but never completed many other games uh, so I completed GoldenEye, played multiplayer GoldenEye, really enjoyed a lot of the N64 games, and so that was what made me kind of fall in love with 3D games. Um, yeah, that was kind of what made me fall in love with 3D games. And uh, but being Nintendo, there was nothing kind of like this. Doom was uh, Doom 64 was good. Uh, although a bit too dark, as in brightness dark. I remember having to turn the brightness right up. Is that the one that I destroy? I think so. I remember having to turn the brightness right up, which is a bit of a pain. Change guns. Are you there? Um, right, let's see if I can do a bit better this time. Oh. Hey. Um, but there was some, I ended up, uh, I played Doom on the Super Nintendo, I didn't realise how bad quality it was until more recent years, how in my head Doom looked a lot better than in real life. I'm just going to have to stick with the shotgun, but I'm worried that I'm going to run out of shots. Um, so obviously I don't want to use up all the shotgun shots on the face huggers. So yeah, so it's... Uh, I didn't realise how bad Doom looked on Super Nintendo because back on a portable 14 inch TV screen in the 1990s it didn't look that bad. Nowadays I have, I don't know, some big TV and playing it on there it really doesn't look good. This game I find incredibly relaxing. Um, I'm not very good at games generally, but the music I find relaxing. The generally empty corridors I find relaxing. Did I get you? Yeah. Uh, the walking around generally empty corridors I find relaxing. The kind of darkness, the low level of light, I find all that comforting. That was lucky. Um, the darkness, the low level of light, I find all that relaxing. But playing Doom, I think was probably, on the Super Nintendo, was probably my first experience with a 3D shooting kind of game and this obviously has a lot in common with Doom except Doom has uh, very fast paced intense music but what I found whereas this is really nice and relaxing um, what I found was uh, is this the exit? I bet I've missed stuff battery, yes I've missed stuff um, 
So what I found was that uh, doing these sort of 3D games, it was just, I don't know, there was something about it that suddenly stood out above when you're playing like a typical 2D platformer game. Even though I enjoyed playing platformer games generally, although I'm rubbish at jumping and somehow judging distance. That one doesn't open yet. Ah, I see there's some bits there. Um, I'm rubbish at jumping and judging distance. Right. He ran right past me. Um, Um, I found something about this kind of game just seemed to suit me quite well and Ooh, some health and so what I found was let me peer over there I've been over there um, What I found was that when I had to progress from a Nintendo 64 to, I didn't have to, but yeah, I, I decided I wanted to get a different console and sort of upgrade from Nintendo. My reason for wanting to upgrade were Not good because there's a second thing in there somewhere. My reasons for wanting to upgrade well, I think I just reached a point where the games there wasn't really many new games coming out. Nintendo, I think it had probably moved on to the GameCube, or at least it was the end of the cycle, really. For come on, get a bit closer for Nintendo 64. There you are. It had reached the end of the cycle for the Nintendo 64, and I think it had kind of reached its limit, and I was suddenly seeing these games coming out. Is it not going to allow me? I know what I need to do. Uh, I was suddenly seeing these games coming out. Um... See, see, that's as far as I've got on here, historically, just into level 2. But if I start with the load game, maybe it will help let me save game. Locate the main junction room, activate all three control portals. This will allow you further penetration into the colony. Pick up uh, seismic survey charges as they're essential for removal of the temporary... whatever. Um... Yeah, that doesn't sound good. Now I've realised why I haven't got much further than this. Let's just see... Does it happen to give me the option? No. No, it doesn't. Maybe it would give me the option. Nice and kindly. Oops, there goes one very valuable shot. If this doesn't work, I have to make sure I definitely... Save. Um, let's see if I can get a save on. For the other one. Um, for starting again. Oh yes, this. Not really good. Um, so yeah, so I decided when I progressed on from the N64, oh, that was inevitable. When I progressed on from the N64, it was, um, I saw people's you know, footage of PlayStation 2, some PlayStation 2 games, and I thought, that kind of sounds 
good to me. So I... Yeah, got that. I don't want to load a game, I just want it to save my game, potentially. Maybe it'll only save if I complete the actual lever. Um, here we go, try and get... I literally have completed this multiple times, and for whatever reason, not, you know, this one level at least, relatively straightforward. And yet here, I'm not. All right, start game. Here we go again. Uh, I apologise now, because this is what you see when you see me playing, is um, me playing the same thing over and over again, because I keep dying. So, um, playing, seeing the footage of PlayStation 2, and the 3D that was on the PlayStation 2, I could see was clearly a huge upgrade on what I was playing on the... Nintendo 64 and so although I didn't have a PlayStation 1 and just played a PlayStation 1 okay he did a weird I'm dead but I'm going to slide down the steps anyway thing and make a noise um, so I was playing PlayStation 1 uh, I would played Sega Saturn and I've played Dreamcast and I've got I had a number of these sort of consoles. Oh dear, that's how I waste, waste a lot of bullets just shooting instead of pressing buttons. Yes, I know you're there and I know I'm going to miss you. Yeah, see? Um, when I saw the PlayStation 2 footage, I thought, yeah, I'm going to have to get myself... A PlayStation 2, I think that'd be quite cool as an upgrade. So I got a PlayStation 2 and obviously really liked... I, I guess I keep doing that. Got a PlayStation 2 and... Realised that I sort of really liked PlayStation 2, liked the, uh, um, the games on it and generally liked PlayStation games. I played quite a few PlayStation 2 games. And by then I was earning just a little bit more money. Uh, not a lot, but a little bit more. And so was able to do things like buy me oops, I don't think it's that way. Uh, buy memory cards and what have you. So I had, you know, had the stock memory card that I would try and save everything on and have to make space on and what have you. No, I got to Where'd you go? I know you're behind me, but... Um, and obviously the second I saw Grand Theft Auto f 3, that was kind of it. That was like, oh my god, look at this game. Look how incredible it is. And hearing uh, the talking in it as well. Come on. Hearing the talk in Grand Theft Auto 3 as well, you know, like the radio and the pedestrians in the Navy uh, every five seconds. Um, it was a brilliant game, but I never ever completed Grand Theft Auto 3. Because uh, I wouldn't be able to get past certain bits that would let you free up on islands. So I don't think I ever got past certain islands like the first island or something on GTA 3. Come on, where's Mr. Big Guy? I know you're here. Yeah, so... If you've played this game, if you remember it from the first time round when it came out on the different consoles, uh, and as I was saying, the Jaguar had a, a game, an Alien game, that wasn't called Alien Trilogy, but it was, from what I think I've heard, because I've never actually played it, 
it was very much like this game, but um, not this game. And that this game was kind of based on it. No, I keep wasting shots. Um, that this game was based on it. Uh, so, if you do know whether that's true or not, I would like to know, I'd be very interested. If you've played the Atari Jaguar version, or if you have thoughts on any other, I've never played any game on an Atari Jaguar. Um, it's a console that I kind of feel had potential, given its power, although I think it was because it was ahead of its time in terms of it being 64-bit. I think it was actually kind of fake 64-bit, if that's the right way of phrasing it, that it was two 32-bit processors or something. Where are you? Are you the one? Um, it was two 32-bit processors, I think. Battery required, good. I was just checking, thought I hadn't got it. But talking and playing is a lot for my brain to cope with. Um, although this is nice and chilled. Uh, I actually, I don't get past this level generally. Uh, I, or I get to the next level, I don't get past the next level. There's more to the point. But... I actually have played quite a lot of this game, like a lot of uh, hours of this game, just roaming around pretty much, getting through this level, getting into the next level, I'm sure I've been through there, getting into the next level and not making it through the next level, but I've never played it on this easy. Which is worrying given that I actually died so far in my playthrough. Come on, I see you. Whoops. Come on. Um. Come on. So, I've never played it on this easy. But when I have oh, when I have played, I'm sure there's probably more knocking around out here to get me. There they are. Yes, you're on my face. Give me a big hug. I know. You can't tell me how much you love me. And I'm out. Um, let's hope I don't encounter any more big guys. Shotgun cartridges, that's always a good thing. When your name is Dan. Battery. Got the battery. Just have a little wander around. Again, like before, I apologise that you can hear, most likely, my controller. It's a cheapo plasticky controller as you can imagine where I'm yeah you're behind me I know um, the cheapo plastic controller and I don't just go that way it's the other way um, I never remember my ways around places and obviously I'm using the d-pad so that makes more noise than if you're using like an analog stick. I think in the last game it was button mashing that was the main thing you could hear. Hello fellows lying there. Oops. Oops. Let's just walk into as many crates as I can. Dum. Dum. Door activated. Woohoo! Oh, I got some secrets. 
Yep, I would never remember that password. Uh, da, 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 save, definitely save game. Unused. I have to try and remember. It's the second one. The first one's harder than the second one. And then let's continue. Got to locate the junction room again. Activate. There's in this kind of game. I think there's almost never any. It's like pick a bunch of stuff up, get to the next location. <laughs> Come on then. I'm sure I can hear my heart beating on this one, on this level, in the music. I see you, but I see your dot. And, um, something I was thinking previously that I didn't say is in relation to this compared to like Doom or something is that it's got the same kind of early gameplay mechanics where you can't technically aim the gun they're not yet at the point where you've got um, be cheeky and jump on me straight away. It's not at the point yet where you've got analog sticks or something. Obviously the Nintendo 64 had analog sticks which was quite cool. It had its analog stick and its trigger on the back of the controller and the analog stick was quite cool for playing games. No, don't get behind me. Where's the other one of you? There's two of you climbing on me. And so there should be three of you shot now. Where's the other one? I just saw two. There you are. Um, and so I remember with the Nintendo 64, for example, playing Goldeneye, you could use the stick to control the... Come on running low on ammo. I didn't want to have to encounter you there. So a little bit of ammo. You could use the stick to aim to shoot on Goldeneye, which was cool. Um, so I would... My gameplay style is generally to be stealthy and slow, methodical. Try and take people out from a distance, if I can, not to uh, rush in guns blazing or anything like that. What does what here? Come on, get round in front of it. Um, but I know that there was some challenges I found with the way that Nintendo 64 controller worked for controlling the 3D. Come on, I'd like a, some more ammo. Because of that. Um, and I don't think I can outrun anyone. So, yeah, so it... Uh, and why does this level look different? Why, why haven't I encountered the smoking bits yet? Yeah, I couldn't do it. Um, whereas all of the non-analog stick controllers, um, let's load game. All the non-analog stick, I'm determined to make it at least beyond 
section one, level two. All the non-analog stick controllers pretty much played the same. That you couldn't do kind of 3D movement. You couldn't look up and down. So all you could do is point the gun and move left and right. And then with the shoulder buttons, obviously you could strafe, which was cool. Generally, come on. I know you're out here. There you are. Managed to get me, even though. Uh... Oh well. So yeah. So I think did I go up this way before? Is that? Yeah. Whoops, don't walk in the, f the gas and calm, calm, run, stop, wait, 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 come on, clear, forward a bit, clear, run, picked it up that's okay um, every time I've played this this is the way I've gone not that other way and I've never lived long enough to make it the other way ironically um, so yeah there's something more awkward about not being able to actually aim your gun at what you want to shoot and just essentially having the computer decide these things for you. Come on. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you have played this, obviously do let me know your thoughts on this game. But also, even if you haven't played this, on me playing it through now, what are your thoughts in relation to, like, do you find this seems like quite a relaxing, chilled game? Even though, literally, it's based on a kind of horror film franchise. If you want to call it a horror film franchise, I don't know if, it's, if people do. Um, and I am roaming around shooting. You know it's still for me at least I find this relaxing it's chilled out levels yeah I can hear my heart beating away on the game it's chilled out levels at least I find just you know it's a nice calm pace at the moment at least and uh, you can tell when I'm concentrating because I stopped talking. Um, and while I'm playing, the music is just nice. It's a relaxing soundtrack. As far as I'm aware, none of these should open until I've been in downstairs and done the opening thingy. I've got three shots. Right, okay. So now I know. Kind of where I am. Gotta remember where that downstairs bit is. Right, let's have a look around. There is a button. Buttons are what I like. A button. Oh no, two shots left. And there's three of these guys down here, isn't there? Or is there two more? Whatever it is. There's... Yeah, there's you. Your friends died quicker, didn't you? Alright, there's one more at least. Where are you? There was definitely three down here with me last time. Oh, okay. How on earth... How to get on my face? Cheeky thing. 
Um, obviously playing on the easiest level. Oh, no. So yeah. game I'll play just a little bit longer this is a game I definitely might revisit unlike Mega Man which I don't know I might visit again but it's less likely that I'll visit Mega Man again it's too difficult for me Come on, that's got to have got your attention. Do you have hands to open the door? I have five shots. You can see that the shots make contact. And yet that time it took five shots. Sometimes it's taken three, other times four. Calm steam. Calm steam. Come on, I've got you. See, I got you. I told you I got you. Hope I'd got them. Or are they still knocking around somewhere there? Hidden in the distance. I'm sure they'll find me if they are. Just trying not to use my big gun, my shotgun, until I need it. Whoops, I think I must have walked into some steam. That was three shots that we needed then. Trouble is, my risk taking. That's five. Um, has meant that I actually lost more life. Saved shotgun shells. Potentially, but lost life, which isn't helpful. Just have to try and make. Ooh, do 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 do. I see you. So what would be great about now would be someone to say, here you go Dan, here's a whole bunch of shotgun shells. We know that you need them. I know that I need them. None of these guys have dropped shotgun shells. Can they not carry shotguns? Just for me. Be very kind. No, I don't need to go there. I'm going to have to go down and hope that I've got enough life and shotgun shells for the guys behind the door. I'm probably okay with the guys in front of the door. What I'm not necessarily so okay with. Are the ones uh, behind the door? So I've got what six shots when I get there. 
Six shots, 49 life. Obviously, Pim's a clock. Right, I know what's behind that door. I know that I never seem to succeed. And there isn't another door. How did I do it before? That's the big question. Because I obviously went back there, didn't I? The first time I did this level triggered the three... Oh. I managed it before. I wonder why I can't do it now. Weird. But I will try one more time. I have this thing where I just want to make it to uh, beyond level two. Beyond the level. Come on. Loading data, I know. Right. I can hear my heart beating. Right, go on, get your attention. One, two, three. No. So I need to try and have like full life. That'd be good. Let's go this way first. So I can just see if I can get to those doors. I'm trying as much as possible not to use that gun. Bip. And over here. Bip. No, don't be an annoying face hugger. I know you love me. Do you want to hug my face? here, make sure I'm <sighs> using a better gun, okay, no, where did, see, there was three of you here before, off my face, where'd you go, you're dead, right. I don't want to waste these ones, okay, 18 shots, Okay. No one else jumping out on me? Woohoo, I got some tiny bit of ammunition. Uh, button. Button. Uh, I think one of my favourite types of games like this, which I definitely will be playing on my channel, are the Torok games. I remember the first time I played the original Torok Dinosaur Hunter and set off the big weapons <laughs> and watching the lighting effects and everything I thought it was incredible. Okay, slowly, so I've got time to change weapons if I need to. Just have to not draw any of those large fellas to me. Yes, you. You're the fellas I'm talking about. You're the ones I'm not a fan of. 
not a fan of the little fast running ones that seem to like me so much they want to hug me all the time. Right, three shots left. Nothing like giving me just enough ammo for exactly what you think I need to do. That door's locked. Who's around the corner? Who's around the corner? Right, so that's going to go that way in a minute. Let's walk this way first. Slowly, slowly. That door's open. Who's going to be behind the red door? Whoops. Yes, I know. Come on, let me shut the door on you. Or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I will call it a night there. I have died enough. And this is definitely a game I shall pick up again. See if I can get anywhere on it. Um, if you want to see me continue playing this, see if I can get beyond level 2. Which I suspect... You know, I've got turned on, open the sort of doors, and I've uh, you know turned the door lights on. Um, I suspect that I'm not far off completing that level. I don't 100% know, but I suspect I'm not far off. So if you do know whether I'm close enough that you think if I just give it a bit longer, I'll figure it out. Um, this isn't me playing. This is uh, it going on auto. Um, so if you think that. Actually, I could probably figure it out that you've played it before, you know what's coming, etc. Then let me know in the comments to sort of give me a bit of motivation to keep going. And I'll try that again and see if I can get through to level three and keep working my way through. And obviously, as I keep playing, I'll hopefully improve. Um, but in the meantime, if you're not subscribed to my channel, it definitely helps if you do subscribe and want to watch my videos regularly and what kind of things you want to watch so although the focus is largely going to be on retro gaming there are things I'd love to play because I just enjoy them uh, so possibly Minecraft in the future um, one thing I was thinking was doing like a survive the night type thing on Minecraft the idea of just setting the setting to quite difficult and then dropping myself into Minecraft and having to wait until night time so not do anything until night time and then just as the sun starts setting I have to try and survive for the night and I can't just create a um, you know a little cave and hide in it I have to actually be a bit more active um, but yeah I haven't really thought that through yet but I, I'm just trying to think of something fun to do with Minecraft yes yeah, so I've not been on a level like this one yet um, other games obviously there are some PlayStation 2 games as I've mentioned like the Grand Theft Auto games I'd love to play them as well on here um, so if there are any games obviously retro ideally but any games that you think oh I'd love you to play this or play that I can play all sorts of games I've got uh, consoles right up to the PlayStation 5 that I can play potentially um, it just depends what you would like to see me play um, and I can mix in some newer games with retro stuff if that's what you'd like or if not I can just stick to retro um, but whatever you'd like to see me play so anyway, thank you for joining me here and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.